So today we're gonna to be talking about a very high tech ring. Maybe the most high tech ring. I mean, you can't even really call it a ring. It's a ring in the sense that it fits on your finger, but it's a tracker. It's a, a tracker focused on a very specific area that I am personally intrigued by and about. I'm talking about So this is a comprehensive health tracker that you wear on your hand, and that's a good thing because I've tried everything on the wrist and I just can't get comfortable sleeping with it in the first place. So this is gonna be more streamlined and have less of a, an impact because it's lightweight and it's on your finger. It's called the Aura Ring. And I have three of them in front of me. Uh, this one is like a black kind of brushed color. Wow, that was a good cut. It went t -t 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 -t, and I went tch, black, tch, a black kind of brushed or carbon color. You can see it is far more advanced than any other ring you've seen previously. And this is actually the third generation, so they continue to refine it. We're all obsessed with this sleep data, and this seems to be one of the most comprehensive sleep data providers. Get the ring, charge brick, or charge puck, I don't know what you wanna call it. How easy is that to charge? You just drop it on, on the bedside table. You're gonna get like a couple days of battery out of it. You've also got a USB-C to A cable. Nice packaging idea, by the way. Here's a size 11, a metallic finish. You can see like the gold finish on it. Uh, a bigger size, size 11 will fit on my ring finger. The last one they sent over is Heritage Silver Gen 3, and this is a size nine. Ultimately, there's a few options. There's even more on the website to choose from. And then essentially what happens, you're gonna set it up with your phone like you would do with a fitness tracker, except in this case, it's probably the smallest fitness tracker that you own. Listen to this list. Bedtime, deep sleep, latency, REM sleep, sleep score, sleep efficiency, sleep stages, time in bed, total sleep, and wake up time. That's a comprehensive list. You know this if you have any experience with other trackers that don't go to that level of granularity and that level of detail. There's also readiness, body temperature, heart rate variability, readiness score, respiratory rate, resting heart rate, and activity, your activity score, activity burn, goal completion, inactive time, steps, total burn, and walking equivalency. Anyway, as you can tell, very comprehensive app. I've used fitness trackers in the past. It's time to use one that goes on my hand in the form of a ring. This is the Aura Ring Gen 3. Let me go use it. This is the fit kit. So you'll get this if you buy the ring and figure out your ideal fit. And so like if I pull out a size 12, if I wanna wear it on my index finger, you can see that fits well. Then what you're gonna do is wear it to sleep and see if it's comfortable the whole night. I've been wearing the Aura Ring Gen 3 for a few days now. In fact, I think today might be day number five and I haven't charged it yet, which is maybe my favorite thing so far about this device. And I'm gonna get into all this data. There's so much data that comes out of this thing. It's very exciting. I've worn so many different trackers, fitness trackers, watches. I don't like sleeping with anything on and I'm sure I'm not alone. This is the least intrusive. It's the first one that I can kind of forget that I'm wearing during sleep. This one just happens to fit me the best, although probably my favorite color is this one, which is like this brushed black, matte black look to it. Let's take a closer look at the data. This is the home page, and actually before I get into that, I just wanna show you the battery life. So I said I'm on about day five here, and as you can see, I have 24% battery left. So for me, it's well beyond uh, most of the smartwatches that I've been using as trackers. That's a big positive. You of course have activity and activity goals built in. It will tell you your uh, calorie burn. It'll give you an activity score. And if you click on it, you can see how your activity has changed throughout the day. Of course, you have step tracking, total burn and so forth. Uh, heart rate is another thing that's being constantly tracked. You can see your trends. You can see restorative time. You can see sleeping. So the, my heart rate went as low as 46 during sleep and then your lowest average during daytime. And of course, we can just select any given day and see what happened on that day and trends over time. This score is really cool. It's called readiness. This is going to uh, aim to tell you if today happens to be a good day to undertake some kind of 
uh, physical activity or exertion. When I click on the readiness button here, it goes into even more detail as to how this is calculated. If you did a lot of physical activity and really exhausted yourself, maybe you're gonna take the next day off because it's going, going to see that data in there and say, okay, you know, take, take it easy, take it down a notch today, and then your readiness bounces back up. And you can see all the considerations that come in, this extensive data here, resting heart rate. So mine is good, 46. HRV balance hasn't shown up yet because it needs more data over time. Body temperature is optimal. And this is when people were mentioning that this can sense illnesses in advance. This is constantly gauging your body temperature, uh, which is also a contributing factor to readiness. Recovery index also optimal. My sleep is good. I could obviously do better there. One of the things about having a sleep tracker is it kind of encourages you to make sleep a priority. When you get that little reminder or you wake up and check the score, it turns it into a bit of a challenge. That just makes it uh, more of an achievement. And then I'm going to aim at that target more consistently. Sleep balance, previous day's activity and activity balance. Uh, you also have sleep. And this is probably my favorite section to me. This is where this takes things to another level compared to other trackers that I've used. We have awake, uh, REM sleep, light sleep, deep sleep. Total sleep time, six hours and 51 minutes. Time in bed, seven hours, 51. Sleep efficiency, 87%. Resting heart rate, 46 BPM. It gives me this score of 76, good. Restfulness, it says pay attention. This tracks your wake ups, excessive movement and getting up from bed during your sleep. I, I need to pay a little bit more attention there. The REM sleep was on the lower side from what it has been on previous days. Like I think if I go to the prior day, you see REM sleep was a little bit better, 25%, and that was an 83 score. So it changes from day to day and uh, you can monitor these trends over time. And then timing, of course it hates timing because of when I went to bed. Optimally, the midpoint of your night's sleep should fall between midnight and 3 a.m. Well, that didn't happen here because I went to bed at 1 a.m. So not super happy about that. You may notice something like putting down your smartphone screen a little bit earlier helps you fall asleep faster and possibly have better sleep efficiency. So you may build new habits using this data as a backbone. Now, the last item on here is activity. This is gonna track how many calories you're burning, how many steps you're taking, you're walking equivalency. And if you have uh, any kind of elevated heart rate, and training that's going on. This has not been great for me so far. I've had a very busy week and haven't got the physical activity in. So you can kind of see that reflected in the, in the data here on the activity tab. Now the rest of the app lives under these three lines up here. This is where you can uh, check your trends over time. You can also have some sleep sounds as part of the app to help to encourage sleep. Your settings are in there and you can track trends over time. So you can see heart rate variability, for example, body temperature over time. Uh, bedtime averages, which I need to need some work on that. That's a place to improve. And you get some recommendations and notifications from the app that are uh, giving you those suggestions and uh, reminding you like late at night, it's going to say, hey, start preparing for, for sleep. Now would be a good time. And you look at it and you're like, you know what? You're right. And you just need that reminder because you're doing something dumb and unproductive anyways. So you might as well. So this new model has seven separate temperature sensors, precise research grade temperature sensors, knowing your unique normal body temperature, which might be different for different people. It can pick up even the slightest changes. They say it's like having a sleep lab around your finger, 98% HRV accuracy and 99.6% percent heart rate accuracy that is one thing i do have to say about the device is like the accuracy of sleep and stuff immediately you wake up it shows up in your sleep graph it feels very accurate compared to some of the other stuff that i've tried oh and this is another feature coming 2022 spo2 sensing it's not in here yet it's coming in 2022 to this hardware it'll just be an, an update so the last thing to mention here is that uh, this data and, and device is capable of integrating with both Apple Health and Google Fit. So if you're already tracking your data over there and you want to uh, uh, bring this tracker and this information into that app, then that's something that you can do as well. So listen, 
There's a lot of choice when it comes to fitness trackers, sleep trackers, smart watches. It's really hard to know what to pick. I have to say, having tried so many myself, this is really intriguing. The idea of having it on your finger instead of your wrist and having it in the smallest possible package. The reason I would give up on sleep tracking in the past is because it would be uncomfortable to have something large around your wrist. And then number two, you typically, with those things that need to be charged almost daily, with a lot of smartwatches that, that are getting charged daily, you just use that nighttime opportunity to charge them back up. Since this is, at least for me, on day five, the charging is so infrequent that it becomes a habit to use it for sleep, at least so far, but it is early for me. We'll see how that goes over time. But it's really cool to have an alternative option to the wrist, to have something on the finger which looks basically like a regular ring. Uh, unless you look closely at it, you don't even really know that it has all that technology inside of it until you pull it off and you see that it has all those smartwatch style sensors packed into something so incredibly tiny. So from a technology perspective, you have to appreciate that on its own. You've got pretty much everything that's in a smartwatch except, I don't know, one quarter the size, maybe even less. Think about weight, it's pretty wild.